Welcome, my friends, to day number 24 of 66 days of data with Nine. Today, we're entering section number five, where we talk all the way about ungrouping and aggregating data. And today, we start with splitting cells and ungrouping them. So let's have a quick overview about what you're going to learn. All right, and here we are back again. All right, so today we're going to cover um, a very important topic because oftentimes you have um, things in data where you, which are exported from some kind of pre-system. It could be an ERP system in business. It could be machine systems, whatever. And where you, for example, have delimited data, either by a comma or other things. And in our data set, it is exactly the same. So let me just quickly share with you what today's task is. So I'm going to share um, the screen with you just a second. And then we basically will go, wait a minute, we will go, oh, I forgot to open this side, just a moment. So that happens when you're going to be live. So we are here, my friends, and that is our site data exploration in 66 days of data. So far, we have covered importing, descriptive statistics, histograms, and date standardization, which was the chapter we closed yesterday. And today, we start with section number five, ungrouping and aggregations. So the task of this part, this whole section, is ungrouping and aggregation. We want to join the tracks CSV with the artist features from the files artist URIs and artist and extract the number of tracks for each artist in the data set. But to do that, we have to have unique artists. And the problem is sometimes looking at our tracks data set from Spotify, there are um, duets like, um, I don't know, Lionel Richie and Sheena Easton or Queen and David Bowie. So bands, groups, musicians work together. And of course, it's only correct that then both musicians are named. But we want to have the number of tracks per musician. So do we count Queen as one, David Bowie as one, and Queen and David Bowie then as a third one? That's probably not right, especially not when you're looking at that much data. I mean, we're talking about 600,000 line items here. So let's have a closer look at today's task. And I already have an idea how we're going to achieve this. So the ID artists column in the tracks data set is a string, including one or more artists. And I'm going to show that to you in a moment. To assign each track to each artist, if more than one, we need to split them and create a new row for each artist. Investigate the cell splitter node. That's the one I thought about, especially the output set list new columns. Investigate the collection type for columns. Using the ungroup node, disaggregate the data set so that for each row, there is only one artist and the corresponding track. So let's quickly jump into Nime and have a look at our data set. By the way, you can now find all of this data, the, uh, these, these workflows, if you go to the Nime hub and search for 66 days of data. Let me just quickly show you um, if I can demonstrate that. Um, ah, maybe you just have to search for it, right? So um, then you'll find my workflows as well. And from now on onwards, I'm going to upload all my workflows. Of course, the data is not included there. So you will see if you go back to video number one, where we downloaded the data from Kaggle, you'll see how that goes. But in general, um, from now onwards, you will find my um, uploads there. And if you just look at how it's named, so it's called day 24 dash 66 days of data, you should be easily finding it. And my username on the Nime Hub is the same as in the Nime forums. It's Kobisoft. So K-O-W-I-S-O-F-T. With that aside, let's have a look into NIME. So we have basically our table here. And let's, let me just enlarge this a little bit. So if we look especially at these two columns here, the artists 
and the ID of the artist. The ID of the artist is basically a unique identifier from Spotify that Spotify has given an artist in their database to know, hey, that number is Fernando Pessoa and that one is Ignacio Corsini. So, um, and let me just show you a case where we have more than one. I saw one with Miles Davis before. Um, so, oh, there was one, I guess there was one. Let me just have a look, where is it? Okay, here, Richard Strauss, Karl Böhm, Staatskapelle Dresden. And you see in the ID artists, which is the unique identifier, which is always preferred when we are later on going to aggregate other files into this one, the unique identifier is separated by a comma. Do you see that? So we, it's here as well, but we look at the ID artist. So here we have like, that's the ID artist of Richard Strauss. That's the ID artist of Karl Böhm. And that's the ID artist of Staatskapelle Dresden, right? So here we have a few more. Francesco Canaro and Atsucena Maizani. Let me know in the comments if I spell, if I pronounce this correctly. Um, yeah, basically we have some more uh, the same same artists here, Ted Weems and his orchestra. Oh, that's that's a single one, but this one is a double one, once again, um, right? So these are the ones we're going to split up. So what we're going to do for that? We're going to use a cell splitter, going into the Nime repository in the Node repository. We add the cell splitter here to our workflow. So. Um, but we are going to take this one. And the delimiter, as we could see, was a comma. But first of all, it will ask us, hey, which column to look at? And we're going to look at the ID artists. And the delimiter is a comma. So the comma was basically the one which, um, which um, at the end of the day, created the, um, yeah, was, was, the, was the character that separated one artist from the other. All right, so let me just have a look. So at the output, it is quite important. We want to keep everything in one column. So I, sh I explain to you in a second why. So as new columns is probably not right because otherwise we would have a lot of missing data. Just imagine if you have three artists, you would have basically three columns, but for the majority of songs, they are performed by single artists. So that wouldn't work out as well. So we would probably export it as a list. That's at least what I would try. And then just execute, uh, just save that, label that note. Um, so basically split um, ID artists by comma as list. So that gives us a good indication what this one does. Once again, bold the heading and execute and see what it does. Let's see how, how it then looks for a moment. Because I guess the advantage of having a list is we could have both single entries and multiple entries in the list, so to say. So let me just expand this a little bit. So we go on here and make it a little bit bigger as well. So you can see it better, my friends. So what you see now, and that's a pretty, let me just scroll down to, to the one example where we had more than one artist. Oh, there. All right, here we have it. For example, here, right? So here you can see in this in this row, we have a base. That's the one where we had Richard Strauss, Karl Böhm, Staatskapelle Dresden. And if we look here, we see the outer square brackets and the inner square brackets, right? And that is basically indicating a list. And now we have each item separated by comma, but this is no longer a string like this one here. That's a pure string, right? The uh, square bracket counts as a character, the comma counts as a character. So these kinds of things. And now we have this separated as a list. And now with this one being a list, we can use another node to make this unique and have a close look at the number of rows here. It's still the 586,672 that we know from our previous exercises. But now look, we are going to use the ungroup 
it's not ungrep, but ungroup node. And ungrouping is a pretty nice one um, because it automatically recognizes which of our cells hold lists instead of the strings that treats its content as a singular value. It, the, this node recognizes that this split results list is basically holding the artists. And now we split this up. And what it will do is it will create a new row for each and every single artist song combination. So as I told you, have a close look here at the number of rows that we have here. Now we just label it ungroup um, ID artists split result list. This, was that the right name? ID artist split result list? Yes. Now we say like this, execute. And now you see we have 757,170. So a 100, what is it? 175, 180,000 rows more because now we have split up. So let's just have a look if that worked out. If we once again go here and we see this is row 1127. Let's have a look. Look at the data table, increase it a little bit. All right, go to the end. Now it is a string again, but this time this string only holds one. And let's just go to 1127. Oh, a little bit too far. Just a moment, let me get there. There we are. Do you see that? Now we have, although the artist still is the same, you see that? We have now each row separated. One thing we might want to do here, um, is that we potentially take care at some point in time about the square brackets, about the, um, um, uh, uh, how do you call it, apostrophes, um, at one point in time, so that we, at the end of the day, only have the ID artist split result list. But in general, this one did what we expected it to do, and now we have like nearly 200,000 line items more to work with. All right. So that basically, I would say, concludes what was our task today. Tomorrow, we are finally, finally going to include the other two um, uh, as data sources into our workflow. And we're going to use the mighty joiner node. And the joiner node is a node that has improved so well over time in, in NIME. If you don't know what a join is, Nime will make it really easy for you. So, as always, if you really like what you are learning here, um, then make sure that you leave a comment below, either with the heart, with the like, or whatever. If you have any questions, let me know. Oh, and by the way, if you um, if you have not yet um, if you have not yet um, mailed me because um, of the $20 voucher for the NIME ePress books, which basically helps you to get the NIME Press ebooks completely for free. You don't have to pay for anything. Just mail me here at phil at procurementzen.com and I make sure to um, send the discount voucher over to you. Just make sure that you mention NIME somewhere and I will send the voucher over to you. All right, so with that said, this concludes today's session of 66 days of data with NIME. Day number 24, you can find this workflow that I just showed you on the NIME Hub. Just search for 66 days of data and Kobisoft. We will see each other tomorrow on day number 25. So see you tomorrow and bye-bye.